Today, we are talking about how to winterize your house or your facility with the change of the season. So here is a winterization checklist that you can use. Uh, we'll go over this very quickly. Inspect your furnace, change the filter, inspect your fireplace. Um, if you have a gas fireplace, are the flames burning cleanly and properly? Um, have your chimney inspected and cleaned as needed, especially if you have a wood burning fireplace. Uh, insulate your water pipes, uh, especially if you have a crawl space or a basement or any exposed water pipes outside. Uh, inspect your window and door seals, uh, including your garage door seal and replace as necessary. Uh, in some areas of the country, you can install storm windows or you can even buy uh, window inserts, which help the uh, insulating characteristics of your window, help keep out drafts in the wintertime, hot air in the summertime, something to think about. Uh, install receptacle and switch insulation, uh, the little foam pads basically that you remove the cover plate and stick this little foam pad on over it and then reinstall the cover plate. Uh, use expanding foam or silicone sealant to fill large gaps or cracks around the exterior walls, especially at penetrations where piping or conduit come through an exterior wall or roof. Uh, have your roof inspected by a professional. Um, it's dangerous for you to climb on your roof by yourself. Uh, clean the gutters and downspouts. Obviously, if your gutters are full of leaves and dirt and debris, they're going to fill up with water or snow and ice. That could be a bad thing and cause property damage. Uh, disconnect all garden hoses outside. Uh, winterize your irrigation system. Test all your smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors and replace the batteries. Have spare batteries, a first aid kit, flashlights, medication, water, and non-perishable food on hand. So here's a picture underneath my uh, guest bathroom sink. You can see where the, uh, the drain pipe goes through the wall there. I sprayed some expanding foam around it because there is a large uh, gap between the pipe and the wall. And then here again, underneath my kitchen sink, you can see there's two penetrations where the drain waste vent piping goes through the wall. And again, this is on an exterior wall, so you don't want any drafts or bugs coming in there. Um, here's what a, a frost proof or sometimes called a freeze proof hose bib looks like. And it's got a little vacuum breaker on top. But the main thing to remember is you can see there is no garden hose attached to it. Always, always take your garden hoses off at the very beginning of winter before we get freezing temperatures. Otherwise, if you leave your garden hose attached, there's a real risk that water can freeze inside the pipe or inside the, the hose bib itself and actually split the pipe split the hose bib. Uh, test your carbon monoxide alarms. You see there's a test button you can push there. Same with your smoke detectors. Push the test button, replace the batteries. And these do need to be replaced, I believe it's every seven years. You can buy these at Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, Walmart. Some are hardwired. Some are battery powered only. Some are hardwired with battery backup. Window and door seals. So looking at a bottom door seal or sometimes called a door sweep. This one I replaced myself recently because it was worn out and the rubber was starting to separate. And there's different styles, different colors. Some of them you can slide on. Some of them you have to actually remove the hinge pins and remove the door, lay the door down flat on the ground. And a lot of times the old door seal may be screwed or stapled or nailed to the bottom of your door. And 
And again, there's the bottom corner seals that you see there. Those actually are important. Don't take those off. You do want those in place. Um, they help keep drafts and bugs out of that corner of your, your entry doors. And we'll do a quick inspection of this, this door seal all the way around. So again, you're looking for cuts, gaps, nicks, squished areas, splits, where it might be falling off. This one looks like it's in good condition, obviously. And there's the other corner seal. There is a little cut there. So ideally, it would be a good idea to go ahead and replace at least this side section of door seal. Uh, windows, you know, check your window seals. You can also install your storm windows now. Or as you see in this video, what I did is install, basically it's a piece of plexiglass with foam weather stripping all the way around. Kind of serves the same function as a, a storm window. I'll try to give you a better view. So yeah, you see the piece of plexi in front of the window. Might be hard to see on camera. And then on your receptacles and your switches, if you carefully remove the cover plates, you can install insulation like you see here. It's a little foam rectangle. You place that on, reattach your, your cover plates, and that keeps out drafts from coming through your, your switch boxes or your, your, your J boxes, etc. Wow. You can also add additional insulation up in your attic to increase the uh, insulating characteristics to help keep your house a little bit warmer. So furnaces, boilers, etc. Want to keep the area clear around them. Don't have anything stacked up against them. Check the exhaust duct. You'll see the supply plenum and all the supply runs I've insulated. Help improve efficiency. Also helps keep the cold air colder longer in the summertime and the warm air warmer in the wintertime. And you can use that mastic around all of the joints to keep them sealed up. Also, you see the black foam there on the hot water pipes leaving the water heater. That's another good practice to insulate your water pipes. That also helps improve the efficiency of your water heater and the water will stay warmer in those pipes a little bit longer. And again, as we spoke about earlier, fireplaces. This is a gas fireplace. So there's a gas valve underneath that uh, uh, fireplace. That little door hinges down it's a good idea to inspect that. Make sure there's no dead bugs, dead rodents, spider webs underneath there. And then test it. Make sure the, the flames are, are burning cleanly and properly. And again, your furnace filters. Those ideally need to be replaced at a maximum of every three months. Um, if you have uh, dogs or pets in your house or a smoker, you want to replace your filters more frequently, maybe once a month or every two months. And you want to be careful here. You really don't want to go with the expensive high efficiency filters on your furnace. Why? Because they are so efficient that it actually can restrict the airflow going to your air handler here. And it causes the blower motor to work harder, can draw more amps, uh, reduce the airflow or the velocity through your supply ducts in your house. Um, and in cooling mode, when the AC is running, if you restrict airflow, you can ice up your evaporator coil, ice up your uh, line set. You don't want that. And then conversely, in the, the wintertime in heating mode, if you have a restriction at your air filter, 
You can actually cause an overheat condition inside that air handler um, where you build up too much heat at the heat exchanger and the system can actually shut itself off because it's getting too hot. And obviously excessive heat inside there can start to damage components uh, like your, your blower motor, etc. So again, go with the, the more the lesser expensive uh, filters like a MERV 8 rating is fine. So we'll do a quick, uh, that's a safety switch. There's a gas valve. So the draft booster motor kicks on. That closes your, your switch, your pressure switch. Hot surface igniter comes on. So you go in red. The burner should all kick on. This is what you want to see up here. A nice clean blue flame across all your burners. It should be flickering, should be red and yellow. The flame should not be coming out of the burner tubes. Check the cracks in your burner tubes. A few seconds here, we should hear the blower motor kick on. It's a flame sensing rod, says yes, we do have a flame across all burners. Start to kick on. Again, it's a good idea to make sure everything inside this cabinet is clean. You can clean it with a vacuum or a brush very gently. You don't want dust and dirt and cobwebs in there. Um, check for frayed wires, broken wires, etc. You should not smell gas. Um, it's also a good idea to inspect the, uh, the heat exchanger. That's hard for the average do-it-yourselfer. Um, if you don't have a boroscope or something to look inside the, the tubes, the burner tubes. The problem with the heat exchanger, if, as it gets older, if it rusts and corrodes, it can actually crack or get develop pinholes and you get dangerous gases, exhaust gases, that can actually make their way into your supply ductwork. Um, again, that's also why it's critical that you have your carbon monoxide alarms installed on each floor and that you test them regularly to make sure they are working. I hope this information helps. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment for future video topics you would like me to cover. Thanks for watching.